Hello and welcome to the Sugar Plum Robin Knitting Podcast. Hi, I'm Rachel, though most of my friends call me Ray, and you're welcome too as well. Um, and welcome, this is my place on YouTube where I chat about my knitting and share some of my projects. Sometimes other crafty things too. I've been really into sewing this last year, and so sometimes sewing makes a little appearance, but I think today is going to be all knitting. So welcome, um, old friends, new friends, I'm very glad to see you all. Uh, this episode is um, unlucky number 13. Now, I'm not generally superstitious, but I am sad to say that I have had an unlucky incident which I'm going to share with you. So um, there's that coming. and. Um, what I thought I would do today, I really, really enjoy watching all of the kind of year of knitting review videos where people show all the things they've made in the year and, and I really like them. And I thought I wasn't going to do one this year because I've not made many things this year, not as much as normal. It's been a slower year, um, both in terms of my knitting and just in terms of being able to put out this podcast at all. I've done only very few episodes this year and it's been just a really quite heavy year. Lots of stuff going on that's not knitting so we won't talk about it. But um, and I thought well the, you know and I've only got a few finished objects that I can show certainly because I did a lot. I do a lot of gift knitting so I've, a lot of my knits have been given away so I don't have them to show. And I just thought, well, that combined with the fact that I had this unlucky incident, which I will tell you about in a minute, meant that I was like, no, I'm not going to do it this year. But I've been really enjoying watching so many, and I just felt like, well, if I've been enjoying watching them, maybe other people would enjoy seeing mine, even if it's not as impressive. And, you know, I've not made like 20 or 30 garments, and I've not, you know, got this string of beautiful pieces, and I've got some that have gone really badly or have you know, ended up not perfect, and but I thought still it might be worth sharing those. So I'm gonna share some of my, um, I'm gonna share my jumpers that I've made this year that I still have that I can show you because lots of them have been gift gifted away. Um, and then I'm going to show some of my recent finished objects that I've made since I last spoke to you. Take a sip of my water, my water in a mug, so I can pretend that I'm a grown up and drinking coffee or tea. But it's just water because I'm not a real grown up. Um, so yeah, I have like a, a, a stack of things that I've made, and it is nice to look back at the things that I've made in the year. Um, and I then I'm going to talk about the, um, some of my finished objects and some of the things I'm working on right now. So a little bit of a mix of a normal podcast episode and um, a more year in review kind of episode. So that's for today. So um, as you'll know if you've been here before, I'm a poet and I love poetry and I always start and finish each episode with a poem. So I have the first one I'm going to read is um, a poem about rain. It's been raining here. It's not snowed this this year, this Christmas. It has not done anything exciting. It's just been grey and rainy. But actually, I really, really love the rain. I love it so much. And even to the point where whenever it starts raining, my husband goes and opens the windows and he says, it's raining here. And I'll, he opens the windows so I can hear it because I love it so much. So I thought I'd um, share one of my favourite poems about rain. And I have a lot of favourite poems about rain, but this one is right up there. It's by Alice Oswald, I um, don't know if that's showing at all, um, from her book Falling Awake, which is a lovely book. And she's a, a fantastic poet. Um, if you know poetry at all, you probably know of her, and you probably know this poem. This poem is called A Short Story of Falling. It is the story of the falling rain to turn into a leaf and fall again. It is the secret of a summer shower to steal the light and hide it in a flower. And every flower a tiny tributary that from the ground flows green and momentary. 
is one of water's wishes, and this tale hangs in a seed head smaller than my thumbnail. If only I, a passerby, could pass as clear as water through a plume of grass, to find the sunlight hidden at the tip, turning to seed, a kind of lifting raindrip, then I might know, like water, how to balance the weight of hope against the light of patience. Water which is so raw, so earthy strong, and lurks in cast iron tanks and leaks along, drawn under gravity towards my tongue to cool and fill the pipework of this song, which is the story of the falling rain which rises to the light and falls again. That's a short story of Falling by Alice Oswald. Lovely poem. Um, okay, so what am I wearing? Well, I'm wearing a jumper that I knit last year. It is um, the Autumn League pullover by can't remember her name I think it's Alexandra something but it will be all of the the notes will be in the description of this video so you'll see if you click on the little arrow you'll see all of the the names and designers and links and things down there um, and that's this jumper it is a simple raglan I can stand up and show you a bit it's a simple raglan with this split hem here Ooh, my pocket's untucked um, and it's uh, got just this one little detail here, and that's all. And um, so I didn't make this last year, I made it the year before last, sorry. And uh, it's actually one of my favourites. And I was the reason why I'm wearing it today is because as I was taking out all the jumpers and things that I've made this year, I was thinking about how this, out of all of the jumpers I've made myself, is the one I gravitate to most. This is the one I pull on, you know, when I'm cold, when I've been swimming, when I uh, just want something slouchy over my pajamas, or when I want something to go under my coat when I'm out to the woods. Any time I can, I'm in this jumper, and I don't know why that is exactly. So I was trying to work that out so that I could make more like it that I would actually wear a lot. And I think part of it is that what I like to knit and what I like to wear is often two quite different things. So I really like knitting more complicated things and things with lots of interest and lots of colour work or texture or like stuff that's holding my interest hugely. But what I like to wear is maybe things that are more neutral and muted and simple. <laughs> so I'm still not sure exactly how I'm going to navigate that, but I have been thinking about it and I'll talk a bit more about that when I come to my whips. But um, yeah, I love this. It is one of my favourites and partly I think it's the yarn as well. So this yarn, it's a bit old and uneven and it's pilling. And I'm, I'm one of those weird people who actually just doesn't mind pilling at all, don't care. I think maybe if I was the sort of person who liked to look quite smart a lot of the time, then I would really care about that a bit more, but I'm not. I'm the kind of person who's like covered in mud and bits of leaf and has been like through a hedge five times before breakfast. So <laughs> I'm I don't care about pills, you know, no one in the woods or our home ed group is going to care. You know, I'm a poet, I'm supposed to look a bit eccentric. That's what I tell myself. So, I don't care if jumpers pill at all. <laughs> I do have a shaver, I shave them sometimes, but it just doesn't bother me. Um, so yeah, but this yarn is um, very old. It was my grandma's. I inherited it from her. It's probably older than I am. It, um, it's 100% wool. It's you know it had the price on it in like D instead of pounds and pens <laughs> in like old money. So I think it's it's very old wool, and it was all kind of not intentionally thick and thin and like uh, rough around the edges. And it's not scratchy at all, but it's not um, soft either. It's just a really a really basic wool in this kind of really dusty dusky greyish brownish pink um which i don't think shows very well on my terrible camera 
I'm sorry, my camera, my tech kind of setup is not very high quality. Apologies. <laughs> but yeah, this is my jumper. Um, it's got a folded over collar, which I like. I think a big part of it is the collar. I really like this collar. Um, it sits perfectly. I think of it of every collar that I knit, this is this is how I'd want all of my knits to be exactly like this. It, it doesn't slip out to the side at all. It doesn't come down too low, but it doesn't rise up on my neck. It's different at the front and the back. So I think partly that's the construction. And, and again, it comes back to what's fun to knit versus what's fun to wear. Um, so I like to knit things that go in the round, all the way round and round and round in one piece and then are done. I really love knitting things like just a standard yoked in the round Icelandic style thing. But this, this was a bit different. It was knit, um, I think it was knit flat and then joined in the round and then flat again. So it has a bit of a strange construction, this one. I can really recommend it, actually. I think it, what it's, it's it was a bit strange to kind of work it out. You sort of did the, the back and the, the the shoulders, I think, first and went down away and then added on the front and connected it together and then joined it all in the round, went down in the round for the raglan and then knit it. Oh, I've got an end hanging out. I'll fix that later. And then did it... Um, back and forth and then seamed at the sides uh, and the sleeves are also seamed and it's it's a fiddly construction but it was worth it because it's made this piece that actually has a great fit and a great structure and hasn't lost any of its shape despite being worn all the time and stretched out and pulled on and stuffed in bags and all sorts Willow! <laughs> the cat's kind of walking around and knocking my laptop, but now I'm sort of sideways. Willow, come here. What are you doing? Willow loves to be on the podcast. This is my cat, Willow. My co-star. Co-host. Willow, look, it's the people. Say hi to the people. Okay, off you go. Oh! <laughs> It's fine, she just jumped onto and over a box. Ah, okay, brief distraction. Uh, yeah, so maybe I'll stop talking about this now. But it's, yeah, it's a double knitting weight, although I think this yarn is quite a light double knitting. Well, maybe it wasn't originally, but it was by the time I knit it. Um, and I like it a lot. Um, so some of the things I've made don't get worn as much. And it's not because they're not lovely or great patterns. Um, it's because I like maybe to wear different things than I like to knit. So maybe 2022 is the year I try and remember that and take that into account with my making. And the lovely thing is that I can always make all of the fancy, fun, interesting, brightly coloured whatevers for my kids and their friends and so on. There are, I have no shortage of young people in my life who I can knit for. I have two children, they're 10 and six, my daughter's home educated and we have this lovely kind of family of friends that um, we, we love and we're very close to. So I knit a lot for them and I can always get all of my, my brightly kind of colour work knitting needs out, knitting things for them. So let's start looking at my jumpers of the last year so i'm only going to do sweaters and i'm only going and cardigans and things like that garments and i'm only going to do ones that um i still have with me because i have given away some <clears throat> so i think i have six including one i've not shown you yet um so the first one the first one um is one that actually i love and wear a lot so this is my um, Arboreal Sweater by Jennifer Steingas. Sorry, oh, I've got ends hanging out. Um, I never wove in all the ends. Do you do that? Do you do that when it's for me? 
I, I'm not so meticulous with the finishing when it's for somebody else. I, all the ends are woven in and it's all nicely done and pressed and blocked and lovely. And when it's for me, I'm like, oh, it'll do. I'll weave in the ends later. And I leave this one out as like a little, almost like a tag to show me which is the back and which is the front. Um, but the ones at the bottom, I just never got around to. Oops. Um, so yeah, this, this was a stash buster project. I don't know what it is about the start of the year, but the start of the year is always the time that I want to, you know, make resolutions about not buying so much yarn and having, using up my stash. So um, at the start of last year, that's what I was doing. And it's also what I'm doing now. So <laughs> we'll see how long it lasts this year. Um, this is my arboreal sweater, Jennifer Stangas. It's a lovely pattern. I would make more of these and I think I will. Um, it's, I, I really like color work that is, what's the word, like graphic, it shows a thing. Rather than just being a pattern, it shows something like flowers or leaves or uh, squirrels or um, cupcakes or anything. I, I really like that. Something in me is like, oh look, it's a little thing on the knitting. And um, so I really like that this has got the leaves and they worked so cleverly into the pattern and I think they look really nice. Um, I chose, I don't know if the colour is coming across at all well here. It's got, so the, the base colour for this was something I'd had in my stash for a while and I've written down what it was because I found out it was um, Sirdar Hayfield Bonus Aran Tweed in um, the colourway Dapple Tweed. That's what it was. So this was like one of those big, it comes in a 400 gram ball and I had this big ball of it and it was a wool and acrylic blend and it's got these flecks of brown and orange in. And I didn't know quite what to do with it, but I liked it and I like the color. It's like an oatmeal color with these flecks in. And then, I, so I just, I wanted to make this pattern and I had these, some leftover yarn. So this brown is Let Lopi and this orange is some leftover Drops Nepal in like an orange and a brown and so, I just wanted to use up scraps that I had left over from other projects with this. So that's what I did. And actually it came out really well. The body is really wide and kind of loose and flappy. At the time I wished I'd made it like I'd done some way shaping and brought it in and put a rib at the bottom. But actually I find I wear it a lot. It's really useful to have, especially as um, in Scotland where I live in the winter, it is cold. And you can put this over another jumper or I can put this over another jumper quite easily, like have a, a, a sort of slimmer jumper and then this one over the top and you you end up being quite nice and twisty and warm. And it's quite loose and uh, comfy. It's a good, I like a comfy jumper and I really love an oversized baggy jumper. I just find I don't tend to wear very fitted jumpers. So this is, is a really good one and has had a lot of wear. It's quite autumnal in the colours, so I'm feeling a bit like unsure about wearing it now in the spring, but um, it is, it's it's very me and it's very lovely. So that's my first one. Um, the next um, thing I made this year, next jumper I made this year was a test knit for Mona Zilla and I love Mona's patterns. They are all so beautiful and you should definitely check them out even if you just want to like look at some knitting eye candy it is her stuff is gorgeous I really like it so she's like the queen of the the graphic design as I was talking about of having like an actual thing in her color work whether it's you know a color work that's in normal bands like normal and then she'll have you know she's got one with little chickens and ones with mushrooms and they're just too lovely I love them all and I have so many of them queued up that I want to make but um, I did this test knit. It's, um, the pattern's called Hoot Owl Calling and I knit it in um, the Plotilopi, the unspun Icelandic wool. Sorry, it, it is beautiful. Just genuinely a very stunning piece. Um, yeah, so it's quite wide and boxy. Um, it's got 
like a leaf design at the bottom and then this owl in the woods. It is gorgeous, honestly. Like, and I have, again, I've worn this a lot. I wear this over dresses and I wore it in the autumn all the time. It is so warm that in the autumn I would go out with this and I wouldn't need a jacket. It, this wool is, is incredibly light. Like, I can't believe how light this is. I only used a few plates. I have loads of leftovers still from this project, enough to make another jumper. And it's, so it's incredibly light, but incredibly warm. And that's this, this unspun wool. This held the, the Plotilope single, and I would really like to do a project where I'm holding it double, because I think that might be an interesting process to knit as well. This was one of those ones that was really interesting and cool to knit. Um, first of all, I did some techniques that I've not done before, like steaking. This has steaked arms and a steaked neck. And again, it's got that neckline that is really markedly lower at the front than the back. And I think in the end, those are the kind of necklines I just prefer a lot. And I think even with short row shaping, sometimes one a, a yoked jumper doesn't get the front low enough for me. So um, it's something to think about. But this did it with steaks and steaks for the arms. Uh, it was really cool and knitting with the unspun Plotilope was really different as well. Um, it's a tricky thing to knit with and I found it wasn't that it was breaking because if it breaks you can splice it really easily. It was more that I felt like I was drafting it slightly. <laughs> just like the as I was pulling on it or just the tension that I was keeping it under was like pulling it thinner so some bits would be thinner than others and my tension was going wrong and I had to put a lot of thought and care each stitch very carefully. I've since seen other people say that it's easier if you either knit it either double or with something else like maybe knitting it with mohair would be quite interesting or something else like that or if you wind pre-wind it into a ball I knit straight from the plate and maybe if I pre-wound it into a ball it put just enough spin into it that it would hold itself together a bit more as I was knitting because I found it was like coming apart as I was knitting so some bits were incredibly thin it's still strong it's amazingly strong when you think how the yarn would just come apart you didn't even need to put any pressure on it you just lift it up and it would just come to pieces like completely soft like candy floss but um when you knit it up it makes this strong lovely fabric um I don't find it very itchy but I don't I don't really wear it against my skin and the like I said the the front collar comes down I know some people find um the lopi will itchy I don't too much thankfully um I yeah I want to make more in this wool I want to definitely make more garments in this because it's so sturdy it's great for wearing outdoors it's warm which is so key we spend a lot of time outdoors so much time outdoors and it's it's cold <laughs> if you're especially when we we go and we set up a base camp with the kids um sometimes where we have we make a fire for warmth but it's there's only so warm a fire can get you when it's really cold in the winter in scotland so we make this fire and we sit around it and the kids run around and play and i knit and us grown-ups kind of chat and gossip and you get cold so you need a warm a warm thing to wear and this is my warm thing it's got the same color work design on the back it takes a lot of attention to knit this one it's not so much something you can knit in front of the tv and i find that um things when things have been really hectic and when i've had a lot on this year as i said it's not always been the easiest either to find time or to find that kind of energy and focus for this kind of in intense colour work knitting where you have to be staring at a chart and marking off each row and it, each row is slightly different. And I found that actually I'm gravitating at the moment in my slightly overwhelmed state towards things where it's a bit more mindless and you have still stuff going on. It's not just my, just plain knitting, but there's each row there's like a pattern so you memorize those that six stitch repeat or whatever and you just do it round and round and then you look at the next row and so on um which is really d different to how i've always been before i always i find i've not got the best attention span and i always needed knitting projects that needed full attention and captured my attention and something different was happening every stitch every row very complex but now in my old age and with all the things i have going on around me i'm just 
in a, a, a season of my life where I need things to be a little bit easier and calmer and more straightforward. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to know, do you, do you gravitate more towards a simple knitting or more complex knitting? How, where do you fall on that spectrum? And do you knit the same kind of things that you like to wear? Or do you find the things that you like to knit and the things you like to wear, like for me, are quite different? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one or... <laughs> but yeah, so that's my Hoot Owl calling. Definitely recommend this pattern and anything by Mona. Mona's a genius. Okay, um, the next thing... Oh no, okay. We've come, we've come to the point in our podcast where we have uh, the unfortunate, unlucky incident. And, um, you know, let's, let's take a moment and commemorate a sweater that I ruined. So I knit winter in the Apennines. And on, on my notes I've written R.I.P. Um, <laughs> winter in the Apennines, um, which is a drops design free pattern. Um, I knit it in Artisano Aran yarn I've had in my stash for like 10 years, such a long time. And um, I keep my stash in these glass bottles and I have a little studio in the garden which is where I do my writing and crafting. And um, so I have shelves full of these glass bottles full of yarn to keep them you know, safe but also to display them. And I've had that sat there, like, best part of a decade, and not used it. And so I wanted to use it. And so I was looking for a pattern for it, and I felt that the two colours didn't really go together. It was like a dark red and a bright blue. But then I thought, well, maybe if I added in some white as, like, a barrier, it might... And I thought I thought it worked really well, and actually it turned out to be probably my favourite sweater of the last year. This, the favourite thing I made this year, the one that got worn the most, the one that I really liked, it fit me really well. Um, and I was so happy with it. And it came out really well. And then recently, like, everything has been a bit hard and I've been trying to rush through all my chores and I was doing the laundry and I grabbed a big armful of laundry out of the basket and I put it in the washing machine and what came out was a tiny felted jumper. I didn't realize I'd put it in the washing machine and it had. So, here you go. Let's just take a moment <laughs> to process this. I was, I was gutted, I have to say. I was really devastated when I discovered this. I think Everything had been, everything has been a lot. I'm not gonna lie, things have been hard. I've had a really hard time. I think last time I talked to you, I was talking about how you know my son was going in for surgery. He had his surgery, it went pretty badly and he was pretty ill and he's doing better now and he's okay. But it's, the last couple of months have been just horrendous really. They've just been bad and that's fine. Happens, we're all okay, we made it through. Things are looking better now, that's okay. But uh, I think it was just like you know, one of those moments where it was like the last straw. <laughs> and that's part of the reason I'm not podcasting. So it was like, I'm going to have to tell them about the jumper <laughs> that I destroyed. It's, it's felted. And it's not even like I could give this to a child because it is stiff. It is like sturdy. I don't know. This I could use it like as a, maybe a cushion cover. I'll think of something to do with it, but I haven't been able to face the thought of it. You could cut this up and it would not unravel because it's just completely felted into a flat fabric. Anyway, so that happened. This happened to my favourite jumper of the year. Let's move on. <laughs> right. Uh, so the next thing that I made... Oh, this one was a great one. And this one was one I made for my daughter, Audrey. She's 10. Um... She's a bit of, you know, what you might call a tomboy. She likes climbing trees and having adventures. And she is very much not the kind of person who likes, uh, you know, flowers and fancy designs and pink. She likes action. She's just, she calls herself an action kid. And she is. So she requested this jumper. And I made it for her. It is the swashbuckler. And it's an adult pattern, 
but I made it in the size extra small and it fit her fine. She's actually slightly grown out of it now, the sleeves are a bit short, but that's fine because I will knit her more jumpers and pass this one on to her little brother. She grows out of things in about five minutes at the moment, which is fine. I and mean, she still wears it, but it's just a bit short on her. So soon it will be passed on. This is a pattern by Perfect Posies by Paige. And I sit in Drops Nepal um, in the colours red, white, fog and deep ocean. Deep ocean is this darker blue. and I think it's really lovely. There's a lot of depth to it, which will not come across on my terrible camera. But... Um, it's lovely, I really like it. Uh, and yeah, so this is the pattern. It was such a fun pattern. This, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I like to knit. Things like this, which are so fun. <laughs> every, you know, every little motif that I did, I was excited. I, you know, the anchors, that's so cool. And the ships, got sailing ships. And it says, yo ho. Oh, you can't tell me this is not a fun project to knit. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and she chose the colours. I think they're perfect colours for this pirate jumper. Yeah. This one was a great fun project. And then I had a bunch of leftover yarn. Does anyone else find that? Do you find that, that? Like, I get the amount of yarn that the pattern says, and I just have loads left over, and then I feel like I have to make another thing, and then I run out of yarn making that thing, and I buy more, and then I have leftover again, and it's just this never-ending cycle. I will never be free of some of this yarn. <laughs> but, but that's okay. So this is the sweater with the leftovers from this and like a bit more. I made my next project, which um, is the second to last one I have to show you out of this year's knitting. And the last one I think I showed you as a finished object, um, which was another test knit for um, Mona, Mona Zilla. And it was the co Cochinella Cardi, which is like the ladybird cardigan. And there's a sweater version of it as well. Um, which I would love to knit. I would love to knit the sweater version too. So here it is. Um, here we go. This yarn pills. It has pilled a bunch, but as I said, I, I don't care. Um, I shave it if I fancy. So it doesn't really bother me. This is a lovely colorwork yoke. It's got these ladybirds. So um, some of it has three colors in a row, and some of it is. Um, duplicate stitched on afterwards. I think the spots on the ladybird are duplicate stitched and these bits here are duplicate stitched. So if you can see that okay. And here's the back. <laughs> here's the back. And the the lovely corrugated rib. Really like a corrugated rib. You can see all the pills on it. It's pilled and pilled this yarn. And it, it that's what it that's what um soft yarns, alpaca yarns are gonna do, generally most of them are going to pill at least a little bit. Um, and it's worth it for the soft squishiness for me. <laughs> um, so this is lovely and squishy. And uh, I wear this a lot. It's like a thing that I, I tend to wear it more around the house. It's lovely warm. And I find I wear it um, on the cold mornings when I'm getting my son to school or getting him ready for school. And I, um, I'm still kind of half in my pyjamas and I just sling this on around my shoulders and it's so soft and warm. It feels like still being in your dressing gown in your pyjamas. It's just really comfy. And I think I have um, a chronic pain condition um, and I think sometimes I just need a bit of comfort. I just get to the point sometimes where I can't bear anything touching me because I'm in pain. And then things like this come into their own, <laughs> having a really soft Thing. Look at the inside of the colour work. I love looking at the inside of colour work. It's so messy where I've done the duplicate stitch. Mm. And it's so neat where I've done the three colours in a row. Um, but it's fiddly to knit three colours in a row. So swings and roundabouts. So yeah, this is mine. It's knit with that same fog colourway. And it's all exactly the same colours left over from the swashbuckler so that's the deep ocean on the ladybirds the red and the white and the fog and then I've just added in some of this moss which is also a color I think I had left over from a different project from the previous year so again quite a good stash bustery project I had to get like a few more balls of the fog but um generally got all the pills <laughs> so that's that's this one so 
brings me to my last one. And you saw me knitting this towards the end of last year. It's a project that I cast on in the summer last year and continued um, working on into the winter. And I finished it at Christmas. I think I finished it on Christmas Eve. It's a gorgeous pattern and a lovely wool. And I had a really nice time knitting this one. So this is my finished Mariposa jumper or sweater. Um, here we go. I don't think I've shown you this one on. Um, it's by Beatrice Rubio. It's in West Yorkshire Spinners um, Fleece Blue Face Leicester in the double knit, the DK weight. Um, it's got this lovely textured pattern and this split rib I think it is for the thing I think in the pattern you pick up and do a collar and I just didn't because I like the way this sat again that the it came down further at the front and I didn't want it to come up any higher the sleeves I haven't blocked them yet I blocked the body and then I knit the sleeves on and I haven't blocked them yet but they are a bit short I don't know if they'll block out longer and I was going to rip them out because they're knit down, so it would be nothing to rip them back and do them a bit longer but actually I found that I've been wearing it loads with the shorter sleeves because they don't get in the way in the way some of these jumpers have longer sleeves and it's cozy and I do like it and when you're out it keeps your hands warm but they get in the way like if you're at home trying to do the washing up or the cleaning or anything with your hands then you're constantly having to push them up and roll them up like I've been doing here rolling them up and this one I don't have to because they adjust at you know what bracelet length I think they call it it's like here and, and so I, I think I might leave it at that length because maybe it's a good length I'll put it on and you can see it over my very fetching baggy t-shirt uh, here we go oh it looks terrible with this t-shirt underneath you have to forgive that no um neckline looks better with, with t-shirts that are not like this but um yeah can you see the length on the sleeves you can see it's again they're really loose boxy baggy fit and I I like a loose boxy baggy fit oh maybe I'll keep this one on yeah and I like the the sleeves being a little shorter I'm not sure so this is a drop shoulder construction I tend to prefer raglans because I think they they fit me better I have um, and again I'd be interested to know if anyone else finds this I have really narrow slopey shoulders so I find that for my sort of more uh, squishy body I need a, a larger size but for my I tend to, to knit either a medium or large depending on what the sizing is for that pattern for the medium and large and how much ease it has but for the for my shoulders often that's too big so I find I'm often having to adapt patterns to be a small at the shoulder and then just have more increases to go to the medium or the large because my otherwise things fall off my shoulders or don't look right I look like I'm wearing something that's a size too big even though it fits me on the body so um, I don't know if anyone else finds that or if maybe you've got wider shoulders and you have to do the opposite and like have a bigger size for the shoulders and then reduce more um, but I think that's the lovely thing about knitting is that we can adapt it and change it to really fit us. We don't have to be kind of bounded to exactly the you know the store sizes, and I I like that. It's nice to be able to make things that actually fit me. I find that if I try and go shopping for clothes in like a, a clothes shop, I always feel terrible about myself afterwards. I come out thinking, oh, that will look terrible, and it didn't look on me like it looks on the pictures. Um, so I think it's nice to be able to make clothes that fit you and that you feel good in, and there's something really empowering about that. Oh. Yeah, so I, I like this jumper. I like the colour. I like the yarn, but I will say it's pilled hugely. And I only finished it a couple of weeks ago. I could only have worn it a handful of times, and it's pilled loads and loads. I don't know if it's very visible here. I don't know if you can see. Possibly not how much it's pilling. I think it's it's pilling 
really <laughs> a huge amount when you consider I only just finished it. So although like I think it's a really, really nice yarn and it was so sheepy, it smells still like a sheep. It smells like sheep and wood smoke because I've worn it and knitted it so much in the woods by the fire, which makes me so happy. <laughs> just breathe it in and it smells like my happy place. Um, so I wouldn't want to put anyone off buying the yarn, but I will say if you're the kind of person who's bothered by stuff pilling, this has pilled. And I don't think I even knit it at particularly loose gauge or anything. Like, I can't think why it would. I think it's just a bit pilly. And Blue Face Lester is a really soft yarn. So although this is, like, untreated, non-superwash, really um, a bit more, you know, undyed, quite rustic, it's not. It's really, really soft. Um, and they do say that the softer yarns pill more. So there's that. Um, but, yeah, it feels lovely. It's warm. It's sheepy and natural and gorgeous and oatmeal-y and yeah I'm, I'm super happy with this jumper so yeah I'm very happy with it and even though I don't normally wear a drop sleeve because of, like I said because of my shoulders I think it it fits really well it works really well on this um it feels super comfortable and it's definitely one that I think I'll get a lot of wear out of so that's my last of my year roundup but also my first of my finished objects so this is a finished object from over the christmas period now over the christmas period i finished so many christmas stockings and i'm not going to show you any because i've mostly posted them all out to everybody um but if i tell you i still have i think 15 16 to knit that have come in already for next year the stockings are really popular i so I knit, I, for those who don't know, I, I sell Christmas stockings on Etsy and people basically ask me, you know, they can say, well, we want these kinds of designs and we want this name and we want it in like pink with blue spots or something. And then I draw up like a chart for them, send it to them when they're happy with the colorwork stuff. I knit it and they're, they're really chunky. They're really big. They're really nice. And, um, they're very popular. So I have this Etsy shop, which is also Sugar Plum Robin and, um, yeah, I always, always um, have way more orders than I could possibly knit, so I have to like pause orders when it gets to a certain point, and it's been very, very popular this last year. Um, so I knit, I think, 20 something, 24 of those over the Christmas period, and I'm very glad to be done with them, and although I have these others to do, I'm in no rush to do them because I've got a whole year and I'm very sick of my Christmas knitting, which I think is normal for January. So I had all those as finished objects too, but I'm not going to show any of them. They've all gone to their homes. They're done. So instead, I'm going to show these two projects, which are a combo for um, the, there's um, a family that we're friends with and they have a little boy called Sam and a new baby called Elsa and so I knit a little cardigan for baby Elsa and it's in the newborn size because she is a very new baby and we're going to give it to her tomorrow which is why I thought it might be nice to podcast today so I could show it to you so this is the good day baby jumper and I apologize I've forgotten the name of the pattern designer but again I'll put it in the description underneath this so this is the good day baby cardigan you can see there's the back and it's got these cute little buttons and I just knit this in scraps of acrylic that I had left over from my stocking knitting and um, the parents then can just chuck it in the wash and I just think <laughs> they've got a new baby they don't want to be hand washing things they're not knitters they won't they won't be wanting to hand hand wash wool and sometimes new babies can be sensitive so I just thought acrylic acrylic it is and it's very sweet so that's for baby Elsa and then I thought we can't really can't really make a, a thing for baby sister without making something for the big brother and um, we look after Sam sometimes he comes over to play at our house um, especially while mum and dad are getting settled in with a new baby and like adjusting to life as a family of four and um, 
he loves fire engines. So here, this is the fire engine toy, which both of my children played with in their turn. And it's been through the wars. It's very well loved and sort of bent and battered. And he loves to come around and play with this and he loves fire engines. So I thought, I'm going to knit him a fire engine pullover. So there we go. And again, this was just knit in scraps of acrylic and I, I don't even know what brand or colours I apologise it was just leftover bits and bobs from my stash um so this what's a little bit of hay I have pet guinea pigs so hay is everywhere in my life in here and this is the um fire truck roll neck sweater and again I, I I'll put the it's like rue designs rue rue I'll put the put it in the description you can find it if you want so it's just simple design it's knit in pieces um, the color work is in tarsia and then you can hear my daughter moving around it's knit in pieces um, then you sew the shoulders together and then you pick up for the sleeves and knit the sleeves again flat all flat and then you seam down here and down the sides and you pick up for the collar and um, it's got like a little roll neck and roll edges on the sleeves. Oh, little end poking out. Have to fix that. And yeah, so it's just a little fire engine jumper. So I thought these two would make a nice little little gift for my friends. And Sam is three, and I made the um, I think the four-year-old size. So it'll be a, hopefully a good size for him. Maybe a little big, and he can keep it and grow into it. That's my other two finished objects. Um, okay, let's take a breath. All right, finished objects are done. Let's move on to whips. I'm gonna have to uncover the piece of paper. My jumper's on it. Right, let's start. I have all, everything written down on notes because I can't ever remember things. Right, where should we start? Let's start with the um, chanterelle. So I've been knitting for a long time the chanterelle sweater by, um, or top, by Kia from Kia's Bod, which is a lovely podcast. Definitely watch it if you don't already. Um, so here it is, my progress so far. So I've finished the body and I've blocked it. Um, and you can see it's looking finished. Um, I'm really pleased with it. It is just such a gorgeous pattern. So there's some waste yarn from the sleeves. And I only have the sleeves to go. I blocked what I have so far so that I can wear it and um, test it for size and it fits really well. Um, sorry, that was my daughter coming in. Um, yeah, so I, I finished the body, I blocked it, checked it for size, it fits really well, it's so perfect. I am delighted with it and it's such a flattering piece. Um, so if you don't know um, this project it's in knitting the round from the top down I added in short rows to um, make the neck longer on the back so that it would again be a bit further down and fit me better it's got this raglan construction it's striped and then it has this color work here which is really ingenious to give it like an empire waistline so just below the bust you do the color work um, and you use the same needle so the color work is a Usually your colour work tension is a bit tighter than your stockinette and certainly than your lace. So it, um, it's, hello Willow, are you meowing at me? Are you okay? It nips in a, a little bit there, just a little bit to give it a kind of a waistline there. And then this beautiful lace, which is a really simple lace pattern, very simple and easy to knit and memorise. I've really enjoyed knitting this, it's lovely. And the yarn was a special treat to myself last Christmas. This yarn here is from Mr. B, 
and it or from Bird Street I think they're called Bird Street UK and um, it's the colorway is called Satsuma in my stocking if you can see it very well it's um, kind of a, a pale aqua kind of color turquoisey color with speckles in all sorts of different colors and then I've combined it with this um, Novita Venla and I want to say this color is called something like hazelnut or something like that but it's a, a kind of hazily brown which is one of the colors that you can kind of see in the speckles so I thought it picked up really nicely um, yeah this yarn was a treat to myself this pattern is really economical with yarn it uses only two skeins of um, of each of, of the of this color so you could if you have a special this is a sock yarn it's four ply it's I think wool and nylon merino and nylon and so this is going to be a, like a lightweight summery top and the Novita is wool I think but super wash and um, yeah, it will have sort of three quarter length sleeves with a bit more stripe and then some rib. Um, gorgeous pattern, gorgeous top, really, really nice and really fun to knit. I'm going slowly on it because it's four ply and I'm slow, but I've just been sort of picking away at it over the last sort of six months to eight months. I've just been sort of doing a little bit at a time here and there and it's really nice. I'm so pleased the body is done. I'm going to pick up the sleeves really soon. So that's my chanterelle. Um, next thing I've been doing, uh, I picked up these Yule mittens. Sorry for the crinkling. Yule mittens from um, Nina Pomerenko, who's the, I forget what her podcast is called, podcaster, but she... Um, always does she does mittens with lovely woodland creatures and I was doing this last year as a mystery knit along and I, I never finished it I didn't have enough time um, so I picked it up again this year and did a little bit more still not finished you can see it's like a robin um, and it's a really lovely pattern and um, I've been again just sort of plucking away at it doing a few rows here and there it's a really nice pattern for traveling with and actually I was cat sitting for a friend of mine over the holidays and I was walking over to her house and it's about maybe a 40 minute walk I don't drive and so I found this was a really nice one to take with me in my bag because it wasn't too heavy so it wasn't hurting my back and when I got there I could just do a few rows and say hi to her cat who is very elderly and doesn't like to be left on his own. So yeah, this is a nice thing. I've been I've been enjoying it a lot. I just think it's come out so pretty. Hello, what are you up to? Hello's nudging the <laughs> she's nudging the laptop again. You just want to be on the podcast and talk to the people. Yeah, that's that one. Um working a little bit on my far away jumper but I'm not going to show that to you this time I'll show it to you next time I think and try and like um talk about it in a bit more depth because we're, we're running out of time but I'll talk about this next one this is my last whip and it is the Whitmore pullover by Amy Loudon and I I love this with every part of me I finished the body and I'm working on the sleeves. It's got this lovely simple lace design. Um, it's kind of loose and blousy in the body and uh, it's just beautiful. It's a really nice pattern. I love it so much that I'm already planning subsequent ones I will make in what colours and what yarns. I. And I rarely knit patterns more than once because I'm definitely a person who likes to always be making something new and doing something different. Um, but I will definitely make more of these. It's one of my favourite knitting patterns I've ever made. It's so nice to knit. It's so lovely. It's got just enough interest in this lace. And it's knit in a combination of... Um, mohair and uh, this is an 
one of my Knit Crate yards. I had a Knit Crate subscription for the year as a Christmas gift from last year, um, which has stopped now. But it's oh, it's not showing very well, is it? If I move this slightly this way, will that show any better? No, there. Can you see? So this is um, Ordine Wool's um, or Aldine. I don't know how you say it. This is the Shine Sport in the colorway Sprout. And it is um, merino and tensile. It's very shiny, which again, you can't see with my setup, but it's shiny and it's got these specks of brown and specks of green. I'm holding it double with Drops Kid Silk in off-white, which is just a, a sort of whitish one. I'm holding these double. Um, and this is the, the colour that it makes. Hopefully you can see that okay. It's got this um, these speckles of the brown and green, which are lovely. This way now. <laughs> so there. It um, it's made a kind of off white with just these little very muted speckles, especially because the the mohair has muted them even further. Um, this is blocked, but it's lovely. I've tried it on for fit. Fits great. Um, I'm so happy with it. I just, I don't know what to say. I think the one thing is that the collar, there's no short rows, there's no nothing for the collar, so the collar will ride up a bit high for me. But um, I, I, I love it. I've been obsessed with the idea of a lace yoke for a really long time and I've not made myself a lace yoke jumper, I think ever. I have made some for other people, but I don't think I've made one for myself. So, um, I made this one and I, I'm i so happy. <laughs> I'm delighted with it. So I'm knitting a lot on this and I paused it. I cast this on on Christmas Day and as you can see it's come come along quite quickly. It's knit on four millimeter needles. So it's like a, a fingering weight and the, the lace weight mohair held together um, to make it about a double knitting weight. I have so many more of them that I want to make. I'm so excited about it. I think it's a really lovely project. So those are all my works in progress at the moment. Um, and that about brings us to the end of the knitting. So if you've stayed all this time, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to finish up with another poem. And before I do, I just want to say, I hope you've had a good new year um, and a good winter holiday, no matter what you celebrate, or some holiday if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And I hope you're just having a uh, as safe and comfortable and um, as nice time as possible. Uh, thank you for joining me for my little podcast. It's lovely to be able to do this again. I'm so happy to have a bit of time to do it and I hope I'll be able to be back before too long. I'm going to finish with a poem from one of my books. Um, this is uh, my book Wayne. It is a uh, a book of LGBT retellings of Scottish folklore. And this, um, this poem that I'm going to share with you today is called The Nimble Men. And it's about the Aurora Borealis, which you see in Scotland at this time of year. Um, well, all times of year, really, but you see it, at, um, especially as you get further north, you'll see it a lot. And um, there's a Scottish, there's Scottish, there's lots of folklore around the, the Northern Lights. Um, and one of them is that they are these, um, they're called the Merry Dancers or the Nimble Men. These um, warriors that are dancing across the sky and fighting and competing. Um, and they do it so vigorously that drops of their sweat fall to the earth like blood and um, stain some of the rocks to make the, the heliotrope, the, the rock that has like the red splashes, it's what it looks like on it. So um, this is a poem about the nimble men and I've imagined these great warrior dancer men as drag queens and this poem is called Nimble Men.
for us, the night sky is a dance floor. Look at us Kaylee under the disco ball moon. Fabulous warriors, merry dancers, bonny lads in green lipstick flicking our well-glittered hair. Even the air is dancing tonight. It shimmies. It knows all the moves. Tonight, if you're lucky, you'll look up and spy us, dancing round our handbags until we're sweating blood, drop by drop, onto the rock below. Heliotrope, our beautiful red-flecked jade. For us, the night sky is a discotheque thrumming with neon. Just look at those lights, the strobe of us strutting our stuff until dawn. Goodbye.